Let's get into the state. <laughs> Grounding. Breathe in. Hi, Hi friends. friends! It's Jazz. It's Josh. And today we are going to be doing our first ever Q&A on this channel. We've answered previous questions before, but this is going to be a fully dedicated Q&A so you can get to know us even better. Some really good uh, selections as well, so thanks for the questions. So we're basically on the spot throwing us a hot potato or throwing it straight back. Make that stew. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the way we're doing this, Jazz, we're doing a quick fire to begin with. And so after quick fire, Jazz, what questions do we have? We have some longer ones that we can go more in depth to. Without further ado, <laughs> let's do. Okay, first one is from Leo. She says, what's the one silliest thing you love most about each other? Jazz, you first. The silliest thing I love about Josh is when he does his salmon dive. <laughs> Insert video. <laughs> I think for you it'd be the silliest things. I actually like your silly voices. When you do like the Australian voice, or you do like this Indian voice, it's just really funny. <laughs> Me and Jazz sometimes walk on the beach and there's like these dogs that walk by and we're like, Jazz, imagine the personality in the voice of that dog. And I'm like, Jazz, do the voice over it. It's so funny. So Jazz, imagine Sweetie. What sort of voice would they have? Oh, hi Josh, good morning, good morning. Oh, let's run around, let's run around. I'll be going to circles. <laughs> <laughs> How about someone like a slow dog? Mm, here's some food. What's this? Mm, nah, nothing much. Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> That's how funny it was. That was so funny. Oh my god. So much for quick fire. <laughs> That was a long one. Also, Leo is someone we are currently mentoring right now. She decided to do a six week program with us, so we're gonna take her through branding and growing her community. So yeah, we've been really loving that so far. It's a new thing me and Jazz are integrating. We're both coaches of our own, um, and now we're just trying to do something as a couple and something that's a bit more dynamic. So Jazz takes on all the manifestation, you know, the self-love style, and I'll, I'll take the creative. Next question is from Annika Rath. Do both of you share the same love languages? Which ones do you have? in common. So if you didn't know, there are five love languages, words of affirmation, quality of time, physical touch, giving gifts and uh, acts of service. So my top ones are words of affirmation and physical touch and... And then mine is quality time and physical touch. We share physical touch. 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 Okay, next one. That was fantastic. Um, Lauren, bis underscore K, said, what's the age gap between you two? No judgment. Love you guys together. Thank you. Yeah, age gap between us? Two and a half. Two and a half years, about to say three. That's how, uh, <laughs> that's how <laughs> knowledgeable I am. Two and a half. She's actually a, a, a young, you know, uh, an old soul and a young body. That's what I have to say. So. Um, next question is from Christina underscore R. Do you want to have children? If yes, how many? And did you already think of names? Children, yeah, we've had those deep talks already. We do. Like we in do. the future. <laughs> it's kind of like the, the family dream. We want like a, a boy and a girl, don't we? That would be ideal, but obviously whatever happens, like... We will love our children either way. Yeah, no um, expectation. Yeah. We have thought of names for fun. Like, we've just been thinking of names. Um, but yeah, that's kind of in the future. We still want to travel a lot. We'll keep the names we've thought of sacred for now. But essentially, quick answer, yes, we so, do want children one day. Yeah. Farine Ledorage, thank you for this one. What are your astrological zodiac signs? Great question. Aquarius, if I guess that. Um, My sun is in Cancer, moon in Taurus. Ah, I'm a rising Virgo. Okay, that just does me in. I think men, <laughs> men just know Aquarius, the one that you see in the newspaper. Oh, I'm a human design, I'm a generator, you are a generator too. Next one. Um, oh, this is from Same Clarine hand. Ludorid again. Was your first time awkward? For me personally, it wasn't. It w no, it wasn't. For, for you, I'm really surprised actually, for your first ever time. But yeah, it wasn't very awkward, yeah. I'd say so. It was quite nice. Yeah, I'd say yeah. it wasn't awkward for me because I came, I was already at a place where I loved, well, we mutually loved each other and mm. I felt really safe with Josh. He respects me. He wasn't making fun of me. Mm. Oh, this is from my mum, Jingjing Lipska. I would like to know when we can give you a big hug and take you out for ice cream. We will come on when we can to Australia because okay. right now it's just tough with all the borders and Josh can't even go back right now because you're right. not an Australian citizen. So. We will as soon as we can. Maurice, something you love but she hates. I love 
eating everything on my plate <laughs> at once on my fork or spoon or utensil while you don't like that, don't like that at all. Um, how about you, Jazzy? I like karaoke. You don't really like that. Oh, nightmare. Oh, and that is the end of quick fire, which wasn't so quick fire. <laughs> well, let's get into the next set of questions. On to the <laughs> so first one is from Amal underscore Liu Day. How your life changed after you met each other? Shall I go first? Okay. Oh, me. Oh, you go first. I said, should I go first? But... Oh, sorry. It's okay, <laughs> no, I'll let you go first. <laughs> so ever since Josh came into my life, I feel like I have grown so, so much as a person. I've learned to not be afraid to love the most. I've mm. been able to understand more of my triggers and heal childhood wounds. I have just... I feel like my life is filled with so much more love and joy because I'm able to share small moments but precious moments with someone I love like watching the sunset and I just feel like life is so much more fulfilling when I can share it with someone I love. A lot more love in my life, a lot more joy, a lot more laughter, all for the better, essentially. Oh, <laughs> big hug on that one. Glad I have that impact on your life. I think when I met Jazzy, I think you know, I was quite up in the air, so I found this like, like kind of comfort and, and um, security and a lot of like guidance in many ways, my business, finances, life in general. We, we match very well. You know, you personify lots in my mum and I think that's the first person you kind of fall in love with in a weird way. You've brought order to my chaos, putting it that way. <laughs> um, Momoko underscore TC, how do you consciously grow and continuously work on your relationship? Communication. I think that is key, just communicating our desires, what we want to do, when we are triggered or not feeling well, doing our best to openly, honestly communicate. And before we even get into the communication, which is great, Jazz said, it's oh, being aware of who you both are, so actually mm -hmm. doing those personality tests are really yeah. helpful. Um, so you know each other's triggers and how you react in your world and you know you, you can then know how to communicate to the other person. Um, also doing new things together, because mm. then you learn about each other too. Oh, my necklace is stuck to my hair. Okay. <laughs> yeah, oh, that looks painful. I just don't want to break your arm off. Thank you. Um, I was also going to add that each of us doing our own inner work also helps our relationship mm -hmm. to grow, which you kind of mentioned earlier too. You know, give each other meaning and a mm -hmm. reason to live. Re rewinding, it's probably uh, another way it shifted my, I've met you, and it's actually brought this weird pillar of purpose to my life as well. Oh. You know, how being in a relationship has actually made me focus on more than myself, bringing myself out of my body and thinking, okay, it's not just me, my business, and thinking about myself and my family. I've now got you know, a significant other to care for and succeed with and go forth. This is from Reesery underscore Anne. How to stop being a perfectionist in a relationship? Perfectionism, it's better to sort of define that term first, is that you, you know, you care about something and there's more anxiety and more kind of identity in the actions you're, you know, you're putting your identity in. It's probably pressure, external pressures, maybe from parents that have made you feel like you need to perform highly. And perfectionism then comes out and it gets communicated. And, and you, you put in like irrational expectations on yourself. I know when Jazz even gives me words of affirmation in cards, that then actually, not that she's intending to do this, but it puts up a bit of, okay, Josh, now I need to up my game and give Jazz a word, like another card. And then it's like tit for tat. And that can become perfectionism when I'm trying to make the best messages and the best products and, and the best gifts and best thought in the gifts. You can get burnout. It should come easy. Like with you, all my messages and gifts come easy. And you just like the thought that counts. Mm. So how about you, Jazzy? I feel like I don't really deal with perfectionism in a relationship too much. For me, it's more like in work or business. I knew from the start that I would want to be in a relationship with someone who loves and respects me for who I am. And if it doesn't come easy, then you're probably in the wrong relationship or with the wrong person mm. because it should feel easy. You shouldn't need to feel like you're bidding or have expectations put on one another because that's when it gets toxic and you know you get into arguments and stupid unconscious quarrels can kick in. So you may be to eliminate all the perfectionism in the first place. Place. Maybe you do the inner work first before finding your partner and finding a partner that accepts you. Okay, next one, still underscore dancing underscore 23. 
What are you? I love these usernames. What are your mutual goals? Do you both plan to stay in Bali for good? At the moment, we are planning to stay in Bali mm. for a while longer because I guess, like, at the moment with traveling, no Asian borders are even open at the moment. Mm. So, as much as we do want to go travel, like Vietnam, Cambodia, right now it's not really possible. So, we will continue traveling around Bali, stay in Bali for a bit. We love Bali. As for staying in Bali for good, we don't know for sure. What we do know, or the goals we share, is mm. that we want to keep traveling around mm. and we want to go with the flow so we may live in another country one day we don't know which country you don't know where but we just want to go with the flow so our mutual goal is mm. adventure to have yeah. an adventurous life to go with the flow and what's a fascinating like discovery is that me and jazz know both of us need a change in environment or need more novel sites to actually feel productive and creative and that's really key me and jazz share those traits because then we're not going to get anxious about moving or, you know, one's going to be pulling back. Oh, I want to stay, I want to stay. But we're both like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's keep mm. changing. We're very supportive of the idea because it serves our highest purpose and highest selves. For sure, Bali will always be our home. Connection, you know, It'll yes. always be a home for us. It has a crazy energy. The energy, It's, it's sitting yeah. on a vortex, isn't it? On yeah. The planet. We met but, here, so. <laughs> yeah, Next question is from Namikomi underscore panda. What are Jasmine's masculine characteristics and Josh's feminine characteristics? This is such a great question, so isn't good. it? We can't wait to answer this one. Ready? One, two, two three. <laughs> what up? What up? <laughs> no. No. What's up, hunks? I'm a lady. <laughs> What's Jazz's feminine, well, male traits? So if you didn't know about masculine feminine energy, no matter what gender you are, so this isn't gender stereotyping or anything, mm -hmm. we all have both feminine and masculine energy within us, so the yin and the yang. And feminine has certain like traits and masculine energy has certain traits as well. So we, we all have both, um, but sometimes we identify ourselves with more as like one energy. So I'm more feminine. Josh is more masculine. But we still have, you know, I still have masculine traits, you still have feminine traits. So what are they? Jazz's masculine characteristics, in a positive way, is that you're driven, com competitive in your own world, and you do have lots of structure in your life. It tends to be a more masculine trait. Masculinity is more about drive and more about structure, order, getting things done. And Jazz has got that discipline in her life. So actually having both sides and being dynamic is your power because you then don't depend on the other side of the spectrum. I still love you like this. <laughs> so some of Josh's feminine characteristics are he is very loving, soft at heart, mm -hmm. um, very warm hearted. He is very sweet as well. So he knows like how to tend to my love language is like words of affirmation. He has a very compassionate and sensitive side to him in a good way again. Very empathetic, so yeah, yeah. compassionate, like loves animals, like has that soft side to him definitely that you may not be able to tell from the outside but he has a mm. soft heart. Also like Josh likes to do skincare and take care of himself so that's a feminine characteristic too. For Jazz the male positive as well is that you you know you've got a you're very clear on what you want your dreams are quite big although that's quite you know gender neutral but I think men are more like okay this is where we're going we're gonna go and sail the ship. So I think we both yeah. are quite balanced in our relationship we yeah we balance out each of our masculine and feminine mm. traits we do <laughs> this is so strange you have to cross your legs <laughs> all me bits and bobs <laughs> and so if you would like to know more about how society has treated men not to feel so feminine check out man up video on the health hunk and we're do we don't want to make fun like if you're a man and you mm. like to wear dresses like we're not making fun at all if you feel more comfortable in your skin mm. wearing women's clothes liking the same sex that's absolutely fine yeah. we live in a conventional world where that should be okay yeah. because you shouldn't be boxed up by society and what other people think you should be mm. that's real and raw sorry I, I felt a bit raw about that yeah i'm not part of the lgbt community don't get me wrong i've got friends in there from all kinds of races. Well, in general, because I embody more feminine energy, I love yeah. how Josh allows me to feel more feminine too. So he allows me to like take care of you, do your skincare for you sometimes. Yeah, yeah, exactly the same with you, Jazz. Like Jazz does the same. It's like she wants me to feel more masculine by saying, Josh, you carry up the bags, and not in a bad way. Or like she gives me the bags to carry up the steps and that, let me decide a decision to go to a restaurant. She's like, Ah, oh, I let, let you decide. Does that allow you to feel masculine? It does. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay.
Next question. Next question. Next question from Jaime.53. How do you read the signs when you need to give each other space? Again, it's being aware of who you both are, you know, how you communicate and how you want to be communicated to. I know just Jasmine personally is that Jasmine bottles it up and I can tell, I think with as, as we're both empaths, characteristic of an empath is you're kind of like hyper aware. And I definitely do notice when Jazz, something I've said has triggered Jazz, always I'm trying to snuff it straight out when Jazz is feeling a bit low, I can sense in her face, body language, etc. And if Jazz is not communicating to me forthrightly after a couple of questions, I'll leave it. I'll leave, give her space, give her time to air and think about it. You need to hold space for that, it's really key. I know when I need to give Josh space when, when I, I just sense it again, like I'm an empath, I can sense his energy. I know that he also needs some time to process things sometimes, so then I'll give him space and then Josh, when you want to talk about it, you just will. So. Yeah, yeah. Silence is a, still a perfectly good way of communicating, but don't keep the other person guessing for too long at least. It's hurting the other person, especially if you're an empath. But yeah, I think for both of us, it's it's just like sensing the energy from mm. each other. You are sometimes self-loathing and silent because you don't know how to communicate. Sometimes it's bloody hard to communicate how you feel. So from Miku, real Japanese, great questions. What is your thoughts on independence and dependency in relationships? I feel like it's important to have independence in a relationship in terms of giving yourself joy and love and instead of saying he makes me happy, mm. he makes me feel alive, it's more like you're sharing it. So he brings me joy, he brings me love. So I do think it's important to have independence in a relationship where you know you both have your own friends as well and mm. you you both have your own hobbies you like to do by yourself. I guess naturally in a relationship you do depend on each other for certain things but it's unhealthy if you are completely depending on that person to make you happy because mm. that, that's codependency because we are two whole people who have come together mm. sharing our lives not filling each other's lives. Yeah. When, when someone feels like they always need to please the other and, and the, the other person is controlling the other person and, and it, it becomes in that point of you're both codependent and that's not healthy. You do need to do the inner work on yourself to feel like you, you have enough already. You, you are your own identity and your, your source of happiness and wellness is within before you even meet the other person. I don't think I've ever 100% depended on you. Like even no. when I couldn't drive a scooter, I knew that I could take a Gojek. You cannot depend on someone, but also like want to have that person in your life. Like, of course I want to share my life with you. I don't like 100% depend on you yeah. in a good way. Great question. I feel like Love to it. sum up, in a romantic relationship, I think it's important to not be 100% dependent. In fact, have more, like in, be independent in yourself. Um, and this creates yeah, a healthy relationship. You don't want to feel like someone makes you mm. happy. It's more you're sharing life together. If you have a disability and a carer, that sort of relationship, you may depend on someone, but romantic relationship is different. Finally, boop, ba -da -da, is Yellow Rose Goldie. If you would get married to each other in the future, where do you want your home base? The UK or Australia? <laughs> Got the wedding bells out. Haven't we? It's a bit it tricky because yeah, your family is in the UK and my family is on the opposite side of the world in Australia. We, at the moment, I guess our plan is to just travel and move around. Before finding a base, even Australia or the UK, and yeah. we don't even know yet, we want to do lots more experiencing together. But as for getting married, you know, we had lots of questions, didn't we? When? There's an expectation <laughs> upon, upon when are we getting it? The time will come when the time is right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need to be the one who proposes anyway. But <laughs> we ultimately, our goal and vision in life is that we would like to get married one day and mm. have children one day because we genuinely want to. So thank you so much for tuning in to today's Q&A. Do give it a thumbs up to this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to join our beautiful community. And also, if you have any other questions, comment that down below and we'll always love to answer for you every now and then through our other videos as well. Happy to respond as well, so let's get discussing. Have Wish a beautiful love. day. See you next time. See you next time. Keep shining your light. <laughs> Keep it hunky. <laughs> Go on, Jazz. Do you want to do an impression of me? Hey, beautiful friends. So today we're talking about love. Um, <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it my?
my turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Josh, that was such a good call. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. Josh. This is Josh. This is an impression of Josh. <sighs> Stop, punk. So I'm. Oh, it's okay, Josh. Josh, just just go live. You've got it. You've got this. You've got this. You've got this, babe. The people need to hear you. Stop, Hunk. So I've got a brand new. <laughs> oh, come on! I'm hungry, Josh. I'm hungry. What do we do? We keep it healthy and we keep it hunky. Hey! <laughs> You are so funny! <laughs>